Cassie was still drawn to Thomas, even though she knew that he was 46, not 18, but she still liked him. So these are some of the uh, texts that they were sending back and forth. So Jessie, as tall hot blonde, said, I ache to be with Tommy. Do you miss it, Tom? And he said, as Marine Sniper, more than you will ever know. My heart aches to hear you call me your Tommy. I wish I could be that 19-year-old Marine for you. And she says, I know, Tom. And another time, he said, wish you were nude. She said, what would you do? He said, stare. She said, that all. He said, nope. You might get the magic. So it was pretty hot and heavy for a little bit. But then she kind of ended that again and returned to Brian. And one day at work, Brian was telling everyone that he was going to go see Jesse in person and he was going to take her virginity because he had to drive down to North Carolina and he was going to stop in West Virginia on the way back home. Now, when Thomas heard about this, he was beside himself with jealousy and anger. So, meanwhile, Brian drove down to North Carolina, and then he contacted Jesse. She said, forget it, actually. I can't do it. I can't meet you. I can't meet you, for whatever reason. So, it never happened. Now, I'm not sure if Thomas knew whether or not they actually met, but on September 15th, shortly after this trip to North Carolina, September 15th, Thomas showed up at their place of work just as Brian was getting off of his shift. Thomas shot Brian three times, killing him, sadly, and then he took off. So it didn't take the police very long to figure out who probably had done this, because everyone knew about their rivalry. So first thing they did was they sent a police officer to visit Jesse in West Virginia because they feared since Thomas was missing, maybe he was on his way to go and hurt Jesse. So an officer or a couple officers show up at Jesse's house and they ring the doorbell and a 45-year-old woman comes to Sheeler. They told her what was going on and they were looking for Jesse. She said that Jesse is her daughter. But she began to cry and she ultimately confessed to them that Jesse knows nothing about this. And she had actually been the person who was communicating with Thomas and Brian. She was using Jesse's name and Jesse's photos. And she had even taken photos, get this, up Jesse's skirt. Somehow she had flipped up her skirt and taken photos. I don't know how, but she had done this. And all the while, Jesse did not know. And she wasn't only doing this to these two guys, she was doing this with other guys on the internet as well. So, what we had here was not one, but two catfishes and Brian. Okay. Two catfishes and Brian got 
she felt like she was doing Montgomery a favor and was afraid if she didn't talk to him, he would talk to real teenagers. Interesting. That makes sense. And she has never apologized to her daughter. She has never shown any remorse or acknowledged wrongdoing of any kind. And it is said that she even went up to her daughter after the divorce proceedings and asked her, why don't you get over this? And that is the end of the case. So what do you think? Well, I'll tell you some of my thoughts. First, my heart goes out to Brian, who lost his life in this mess. And of course to his family and friends, who lost such a young guy who had so much potential to go on and lead a full life. Now, what do I think about Mary? Obviously, there is a lot that's not right with her. I mean, there's plenty of people out there who are unhappy in their relationships, okay? Granted. And there are people who look for love online. But what in the heck was she doing on this teen site? Okay, why? Why a teen site? Pretending to be a teenager herself. And looking for teenage boys, I assume. So that is sick. Okay, she was doing the same thing as Thomas was doing, obviously. They had more in common than either of them thought. Isn't that something? Each of them was being a catfish. And each of them thought that the other person was being honest, obviously. So they both were in pursuit of this good-looking 18-year-old person. So yeah, they are very, very similar people, in truth. Maybe she was never a violent person and wasn't capable of, you know, murder or anything like that. Now, it has been stated, I have read it in a couple of places, that, you know, maybe if they had been honest with each other, they would have made a good couple. They were both, you know, she was 45, he was 46. Both unhappy with their lives, apparently. But I don't agree with that. I don't think they would have made a good couple at all who are miserable in the same way doesn't mean they're gonna like each other doesn't mean he was looking for a woman like her and she wasn't looking for a woman like for and she wasn't looking for a man like him so I don't I don't agree with that but anyway so she had basically caused this whole situation to occur and she didn't get in any trouble for it now, do you think she should have? Do you think that she has done something that should be deemed illegal? I mean, how about impersonating her daughter? I mean, it's not a crime at this point. But should it be? You know, probably it should. Let's be real. There should be a catfishing law. If you ask me, I see no reason that there shouldn't be one. Why should you be allowed to go online with a completely fake persona? You shouldn't be. And, and somehow, this needs to be addressed. Not that I think that Mary should have any charge that has to do with murder. was all on Thomas. Truthfully, I mean, she made him angry enough to do it. But I don't think that you can pin that crime on her specifically. 
absolutely 